Hello, and welcome to Critical Praxis. I'm Samuel. I'll be your Thursday presenter. Uh, please do bear with me as I am new to film, and it's taking me a little bit of getting used to. Um, today is going to be largely an exercise in positionality, talk about who I am, where I come from, how that impacts the lenses through which I see the world, and uh, what I exactly it is I bring to the table. Um, academically speaking, I am a doctoral student in social cultural anthropology at Indiana University. I'm minoring in gender studies and in Central Eurasian Uralic studies. I do my fieldwork in Kazakhstan, where I'll be filming from for most of the semester. Um, my bachelor's is in history and philosophy of science and anthropology from uh, the University of Pittsburgh. These two fields, again, have brought a lot to bear on how I see the world. Um, in particular, um, history and philosophy of science has greatly influenced how I understand knowledge production and uh, sort of the knowledge industry, if you will. Um, I also teach folklore, so this is yet another discipline that brings something to the way that I understand the world and the way that I approach the world from an academic perspective as well as from an intellectual perspective. Um, I guess I want to talk a little bit about who I am personally, because this really, really influences uh, how I see the world and how I approach things. Um, first of all, I am a female to male transsexual. Uh, I began my transition about 10 years ago and have been living full time as a man for about the last seven years. I am also gay, um, identify as gay. Uh, I go back and forth about whether or not I identify as queer. Um, and I'm definitely open to discussing the distinctions between gay and queer identities or uh, positionalities as this unfolds. Um, academically, I'm also somewhere between gay and lesbian studies and uh, queer studies. Um, also very interested in sort of the post-queer moment and what may be developing there. Um, and so that's uh, that comes from a very personal place for me. Um, my transition was not just a transition of gender. Uh, I basically had the rug pulled out for me identity-wise. I experienced changes in um, not only perceived gender, but also perceived age, perceived race, and perceived sexual orientation. So um, basically, I went from being read as a straight white woman in her early 30s to being read as a gay Asian man in his early teens. Um, as you can imagine, uh, this a lot of this was unexpected and really um, was very difficult to grapple with for a while. Uh, the age vector was actually the most difficult for me, um, being perceived as older, going to being perceived as younger, um, although it's something that doesn't rear its head as much anymore. Um, but it's definitely made me more acutely aware of how age influences things, how people's perceived age and actual age uh, factor into uh, their perspectives and into the way they're perceived. Um, uh, but uh, I would like to talk and unpack a little bit more my transition and race. Um, so I went from being perceived as predominantly perceived as white, or perceived as predominantly white, uh, depending on who you're talking to, um, to being predominantly perceived as not white, um, uh, sometimes specifically as Asian Amer Asian or Asian American, um, other times as being mistaken for other races. Um, I am German, Japanese, and Irish, if you want to get specific about it. Um, one quarter Japanese um, through my mother's father's side of the family. Uh, one-eighth Irish through my mother's 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 side. Um, but um, anyway, this, this transition in race really impacted me, um, particularly the way I perceive uh, race, of course, and um, uh, ethnicity and um, some of these issues. Uh, this transition in race sort of coincided with me beginning to work in Kazakhstan. Um, I started working in Kazakhstan in 2002 when I was 19, and uh, this was happened before I started on hormones and people started perceiving 
me as Asian in the United States, um, I went to Asia and was perceived as Asian, uh, specifically as Kazakh. Um, at that time, uh, later, I would sometimes be perceived as Korean, sometimes as Turkish, sometimes as Kyrgyz, mostly as Kazakh. Um, and this really profoundly impacted the way I saw myself and the way I saw the world around me. And uh, as a, the, the way I usually phrase it is I had to go somewhere where my race was different to be able to see what my race was here. Um, or I had to go somewhere where I felt the absence of racism to understand the way racism was impacting my life here. And that's um, that was a very profound experience for me. And I began to see a lot of things as racism that I hadn't identified in that way before. Um, so I'm very interested in sort of um, the way that certain structures, um, particularly along racial, gender, and sexual lines, uh, get put in place. And so I'm very interested in things like heteronormativity, um, white supremacy, uh, some of these issues of the way that um, certain groups get positioned as superior to other groups. Um, I'm trying to think what else is important that you know about me. Um, I grew up in Los Alamos, New Mexico, uh, home of the atomic bomb, which uh, definitely had a profound impact on um, the way I experience the world, and the way I experience academia, the way I experience science, um, some of these things, which will hopefully come up uh, as the semester unwinds. Um, I guess that gives you a pretty good demographic understanding of who I am. Um, I'm currently 29 years old, and um, I say that because, uh, as I mentioned before, age has been a pretty um, dominating form of identity in my life. And so that's, uh, I should wrap up here, um, but that's a little bit about who I am. Um, and where I'm coming from, I'll probably reference a lot of these positions as the semester unfolds. And um, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy uh, what Critical Praxis is trying to do here and uh, welcome your participation. Uh, thanks. Good night.